Hello YouTube. Today we are going to be going through the book of Mark chapter 7. Um before we get started studying or reading, we go to the Father in prayer. So let us pray. Dear Father God, thank you for your word and all your many blessings. Thank you for your great love for us and sending Jesus to die for us. We ask that you would teach us and make us teachable and help us to understand your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, this is a fairly short one, so let us get into it. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault for the Pharisees and all the Jews except they wash their hands off eat not holding the tradition of the elders and they come from the market except they wash they eat not and many other many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashing hands. Okay, so that, that was pretty self-explanatory. The Pharisees thought they were all righteous and um, more spiritual than Jesus and his disciples because um, Jesus' disciples didn't wash their hands before they ate. Um, the Pharisees usually washed their hands before they did anything. Anything with food, that is. Anyway, let us move on. He answered and said, Okay, these are the words of Jesus. Well, hath Esaias prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the, wait, hold on, uh, uh, how be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men 
for laying aside the commandment of God. Ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban. This is to say a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. He shall be free, and ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye and when he had called all the people unto him he said unto them hearken un hearken unto me every one of you and understand when it says when Jesus says hearken he's saying listen to me <laughs> um yeah he's saying listen to me um it's that simple and this uh Old King James is a little bit difficult to understand. Anyway, um, back here when Jesus is talking about Isaiah, um, in the NIV or any other translation, uh, you know, NIV, ESV, uh, NASB, whatever, um, Isaiah would be translated as Isaiah. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Okay. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the dry, 
purging all meats. Okay, um, this is one of my favorite scriptures, and it's, um, and it's kind of vulgar if you think about it. Jesus is saying here that um, what you eat doesn't doesn't defile you because you poop it out, okay? And it he says well, it's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you because it comes out of your heart. Okay, let us move on. And he said, That which cometh out of the man that defileth the man, for from within out of the heart of men Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wit, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Okay, um, now back to the words of Mark. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know, would have no man know it, but he, but he could not be hid, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him, and came and fell at his feet the woman was a Greek a Syrophoenician Syrophoenician yeah that's it Syrophoenician by a nation, and she besought him that he cast forth the devil out of her. But Jesus said unto her, hold on, before we get into what Jesus said, it, she asked Jesus to cast the devil out of her. Now, it's not, sorry, she asked Jesus to cast the devil out of her daughter. So, we're not talking about Satan here. Um, there's only two people in the history that Satan will possess and um okay so Satan possessed Judas Iscariot the man that betrayed Jesus and Satan will possess the Antichrist in the end days.
Okay, so let's get into what Jesus said. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she said, and she answered, and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. Okay, so first of all, I don't remember the whole meaning of this uh, scripture, um, but I do remember, let's see, children first be filled for it, it's not me. Okay, when Jesus said it, says, it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it into the do onto the dogs. Um, Jesus is saying it's not scripture. Okay. Anyway, um, let us move on. I. I uh, forget what he was talking about there. I'll have to study it out and uh, get back to you. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed and again departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis and they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hands upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue and looking up to heaven he sighed and saith unto him Ephatha Ephatha that is be opened and straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain, and he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it. And that means the more that he told them not to tell anybody, the more they wanted to tell people. And were beyond measure as astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear 
and the dumb to speak. Um, so Jesus didn't just heal this guy's speech. Um, it sounds like uh, Jesus healed this guy's brain as well as his eyes. Um, and that is the end of Mark chapter 7. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, thank you, uh, as always, grace and peace to you, and God bless you.